For this pencast, we'll look at an alternative approach for finding dy dx for polar graphs. Our example is r equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Now we know that we can express polar graphs parametrically where x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. In this particular case, with r being quantity 3 plus 2 cosine theta, x would equal quantity 3 plus 2 cosine theta times another cosine theta, and y equals quantity 3 plus 2 cosine theta times another sine theta. Our goal is to find dx d theta and dy d theta, keeping in mind that dy dx is going to equal to dy d theta over dx d theta. No problem. When we look at the x equation, we're, we're going to differentiate with respect to theta. x equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta times another cosine theta. Boom. And we would get dx d theta equals d d theta of 3 plus 2 cosine theta quantity times another cosine theta. Now here's where it, it can get complicated. You have a choice at this stage right here. You have a choice to deal with that in product form or to distribute the cosine in, which would give you uh, 3 cosine theta plus 2 cosine squared theta, in which case you have to deal with cosine theta, which is not a big deal, and cosine squared theta in general power form, again, not a big deal. If we're, when we look at the y equation, putting the cosine theta in, you're going to have the product form whether or not you distribute this sine in. I think I said cosine by mistake. If you have r being 3 plus 2 cosine theta, then sine theta, when you differentiate that with respect to theta, you're stuck in product form either way. Uh, we're not going to uh, finish this because we've done plenty of these. You can do it. Just bulldoze your way through it and you got it. The alternate approach I was referring to is illustrated up here. This is a, a decent thing to have memorized. Although, again, maybe memorizing it would be prone to error. Let's see where it comes from. Well, looking at this original right here. So I have r equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta. First order business is I'm going to differentiate with respect to theta the r theta equation given to us without going into xy form. I would get dr d theta equals 0, what will that be, minus 2 sine theta. Interestingly enough, when you look at the x equals r cosine theta, and I differentiate that with respect to theta. See, I'm not substituting in the specific r at this time. I'm just like differentiating it symbolically. I'll get dx d theta, no problem, and I'm going to treat the r side as a product form with f and g. So we know how that plays out. Uh, f prime g, so f prime is going to be dr d theta cosine theta plus g prime f, but of course the derivative of cosine is negative, so it will be minus r sine theta. Now is the good time to start substituting in. I take this r, that goes right there, and I take this, rather easy to have determined, dr d theta, that goes right there, and you're done. Looking at the r sine theta up here, same game. I have my dr d theta already, so I'm just going to go y equals r sine theta, whoops, and differentiate that with respect to theta. And I'll get dy d theta equals, again, treating this like a product form, f and g. So f prime g, f prime is going to be dr d theta, g is sine theta, plus g prime f, it's going to be r 
cosine theta, all the components to this form right here, you see right up here. So that's where it comes from. Committing it to memory isn't necessary. Simply knowing the, the steps, I guess the steps would be to find dr d theta directly and then differentiate symbolically the x equation and y equation and then substitute in last. So um, we can take the bulldoze approach that we saw on the first slide. Not a problem that they give you equivalent answers, trust me. Or you could take this approach, which might be quicker. And in a test situation, we know time is the enemy. So uh, take it or leave it. You don't have to. Either approach works just fine. Your call. Tori out.